Welcome back and on this part of the review we're going to start with problem 15 um, test 2 review when the test on problem 15 it says without a calculator graph the transformation of basic rational functions so these are the two rational functions we have here so basically these are the ones that we were supposed to know how to graph these 1 over x and 1 over x squared so we're going to do that first on this graph so 1 over x has asymptotes at both the x and the y axis and so does 1 over x squared so we're going to put 39 over here and 40 here we're going to start with 1 over x so this is 40 40 deals with 1 over x so um, 1 1 is on the, the curve 1 half would be 2 um, and so on and so forth so let's see let's make this a little bit bigger graph we're going to use a bigger scale than what's on here just so that you can see it a little clearer all right, so we're going to say that this is, uh, we're going to use this as one right here, every other one. So this is going to be one. This is going to be one. Okay, so we're going to graph from this point. One half would be at two. So there would be here, and then one, a two would be at one half. So we have this function coming down through here as it has an asymptote through there and then curve down and has asymptote there. It does a re the same thing over here at negative one, negative one. We have the same point. Here we're going to be at one half at negative two and at negative one half we're going to be at negative two. Yeah, so we're going to go like this. This graph is the graph of 1 over x. Okay, now let's look at the transformations on that. So on this one we have a transformation. This one is going to be, uh, we're going to move that left one unit. We have a minus here. That's going to translate, that's going to reflect on x-axis. And then we have a plus 2 here which is going to be but move it up 2 after we get done with the left and the reflection. So we're moving left one unit. So basically this asymptote is going to move here to this place right here. So your asymptote is going to move to the one region or the negative one region, x equals negative one. So it's going to move there and we're going to reflect at that point. So in an order for us to do that, what would happen here, first of all, is if we put this in order, the first thing we would do is move this over. Then we would reflect. So let's do this in stages. So I'm going to move it over. So it's going to go here, here, and here. So this is the moving. We're moving it over. There's the first stage. And this one gets moved over. So it moves here here and here. So it looks like this. Okay, so we moved it over. Now we need to reflect. We're going to put that in green. So we're going to reflect across this axis. So that means we're going to go here. We're reflecting the blue one down. Here and here. So now the green one looks like this. It's reflected. Okay, and then we're going to reflect this one. So one here, then the one here, and one here, right there. Okay, so it goes this way as a reflection of the blue one. So that's going to take care of this minus sign. And then we have to move it up two. So this last one is going to move this green line up two units, so it's going to move it up to here because every other one is two for me. So basically it's going to move it to that unit, but we're moving the green one. So the green one's going to come up to one, two, so it's going to go through here. It's going to go through here. And it's going to go through here. So it's going to look like this. So this is our final transformation. The black one is the correct curve. So the, the green one is going to move up two. So this moves up 2 to here, 
up two to here, up two to here. So we're going to go down. It's going to look like this. All right. So our final transformation on this one is the black curve. So this one is is the two minus one over x plus one. All right, so we started with the red graph, we moved to the blue graph, then we moved to the green graph, and then we moved to the black graph. Okay, so we're going to start the same way on this one. This is x squared, so we're going to do the same thing here. This is going to be 1 and 1 and negative 1 and negative 1. Now, the only thing we difference between x squared and x is that it goes up a little bit faster because when you square it it goes up a little faster but both sides of this graph are going to be positive so when you square one uh, basically if you do a half square that's going to be one fourth and then you take the reciprocal of it that's going to be four so it goes up a little faster so it'd be right here and then at two squared is one fourth so it's not even up at a half so it gets closer to the axis faster so this is what it looks like bends down and it goes down here it looks very similar to the other graph in that it curves in the same way we still have the asymptotes in the same place now the only difference is is that it's a mirror image on the other side of the y-axis it doesn't go below in the negative region so here we're there, at 2 we're at 1 fourth, at 1 half we're at 4. So it approaches the axis there and it approaches the axis here. So that's 1 over x squared. Now on this one, we're going to go in the same region. We're going to go with the blue first. This is going to move it right 3. Um, it's going to stretch it by a factor of 2, so vertical stretch. And then it's going to move it up 1. So it goes in that order, right 3. Okay, so we're going to let's go with the blue graph. We're going to move it over right 3. So 1, 2, 3. Our asymptote is now here. Instead, we're going to go 1, 1, 4 here, and 1 fourth here. So this is what a graph looks like by moving it over three units. Okay, so it goes like this. All right, now we're going to stretch it by a factor of 2 on the green graph. So basically everything moves up, or is multiplied by 2. So this is um, was at 1, now it's going to be at 2. This was at 4, now it's going to be way up here at 8 for its height. This was 1 fourth, now it's going to be at a half. Okay, so it's stretched way up here comes down through 2 and then goes to a half and then goes back. Same thing happens over here. This is going to be at 2. This is going to be way up at 8. This is going to be at 1 half. Okay, it looks just like something similar to that. It turns, it doesn't pass the axis though. So. Alright, now on the last graph we're going to move it up 1. So everything goes up by one unit here. So this is now the axis with the blue axis. We're going to move it up one. So it was at two. Now it's going to be at three here. We're going to be up at nine up here for the halfway mark. And then we're going to be at um, one and a half here. One and a half right there. Okay, same thing happens on the other side. Two, nine, and then one and a half here. 
and down to the axis. Okay, so the black curve is the thing. The big thing you need to know is that what happens here. We're going to go right three, vertical stretch, and up one. Okay, let's move on to 16. 16 says, give the equation of a rational function, identify properties including domain, zeros, asymptotes, and end behavior. All right, so here's our two problems. We want to give domain, asymptotes, zeros, and end behavior. Okay, domain is going to be all real numbers except for where the denominator is zero. So x squared minus 9 equals 0. That's going to factor into this. So x is 3 and x is negative 3. Uh, it's going to be our two zeros. So that's where it's going to be undefined. So our domain is going to be from negative infinity to negative 3 and then from negative 3 to 3 and then from from 3 to infinity. We just have to take out the negative 3 and the 3. So that's our domain. Okay, on this one, x plus 2 equals 0, or squared equals 0, so x plus 2 equals 0. x is negative 2. So our domain is going to be negative infinity to negative 2 union negative 2 to infinity. So we're going to exclude 2 here. I'm sorry, exclude negative 2. And this one we're going to exclude negative 3 and 3 from the domain. All right, asymptotes. We have to reduce before we can say whether the asymptotes are there. It looks like in this problem it's already been reduced. It's, you've got x plus 2 over x minus 3 and x plus 3. We can't reduce that. So our asymptotes are actually in the same place where our um, our vertical asymptotes are in the same place where our zero our undefined places here. So vertical asymptotes at x equals 3 and x equals negative 3. All right, over on this other problem, we have to look at reducing it as well. Okay, so when we reduce, reduce this problem, next page, so we're jumping around a bit here. Okay, when we're looking at this problem, we need to reduce it. So in this case, the top factors, so we have to watch this, the top factors into x plus 2 and x plus 1, and the bottom is x plus 2 squared. So we can reduce that a little bit to x plus 1 and x plus 2. So that means our asymptote does occur at x plus 2, because it still has a factor of x plus 2 in the denominator. So asymptote vertical vertical asymptote at x equals negative two. If that factor did not drop out or did drop out, then we wouldn't have a vertical asymptote there. All right, now if we look at the original graph again for the horizontal asymptotes, since this one in 31, this one has a numerator greater or lesser than the denominator, then your asymptote is going to be y equals 0 on the horizontal. because the power on the top is smaller than the power on the bottom of the lead term. The lead term of this one. The lead term here is x. lead term there is x squared. Now in this one, lead terms have the same exponents, because this is really, the bottom is x squared.